All right. Uh, hello, everybody. We welcome you to our, I don't think we even have a name for what we're calling this as far as our group, but obviously the three churches here in the Reno Sparks area doing a Bible study on Stronger Together as we've been kind of distanced or maybe it feels like our relationships are, are a little bit fragile because we haven't been able to see everyone. We thought it'd be a great idea to have a, a Bible study on the one another passages uh, from Scripture. And so we'll spend three weeks here looking at uh, how we're united together or be united with one another, how we love one another, and how we're, we're humble or how we serve one another. And so we'll each take a turn uh, leading those Bible studies. Uh, so I'm, maybe we should introduce ourselves if you don't know who we are from the various churches, but I'm Joel Ackendorf from Lay of the Valleys. I'm John Dermay, Shepherd of the Mountains in Reno. And I'm the new one, Paul Colander, up at the Springs. So um, happy you could join us. I am going to lead the, the first uh, half hour here we have on our Bible studies. So we'll be talking about unity. Um, there are a number of passages in the Bible talk about unity, being together, and I'm going to put them up on the screen for you and just read through them. And be at peace with one another. Don't grumble among one another. Be of the same mind with one another. Accept one another. Wait for one another without, before the, the Eucharist or Holy Communion. Don't bite, devour, or, and consume one another. Don't challenge or envy one another. Gently, patiently tolerate one another. Be kind, tender-hearted, and forgive, forgiving to one another. You ever say a word a lot? And then you go, one another? Yeah, just rolling. Um, <laughs> bear with and forgive one another. Seek good for one another. And don't repay evil for evil. Don't complain against one another and confess sins to one another. So, a lot of different ways that we act um, with other people. Because obviously relationships are important and our God has a lot of guidelines for how we can have good relationships. So, with this, I just thought it'd be important to define who are the others. You know, we should be kind and patient with one another. So when we talk about the others, who are they? I don't know. Open it up to either of you. Um, yeah, I mean, obviously there's lots of unities throughout the world, right? Community is people that you live next to one another that way. Or, But I think what you're getting at, all the passages that you've read are, are we're talking about believers, the church. Um, for the most part, I mean, that was a long list, so I didn't catch all of them. <laughs> um, but I, I think, in the most part, those were talking about your relationships with your your brothers and sisters in Christ. Yeah, I think think that's what I saw in the passages. Did you have anything? Uh, yeah, just to go along with that, the, you mentioned the different unities and communities we might have in our lives, but but this really is the highest, isn't it? Uh, Yes, I have something in common with my neighbors who live in my neighborhood. Yes, I have something in common with uh, the other parents on my kids' baseball team. But there's nobody in this world that I have more in common with than my fellow Christians. And so, so there's a unity there that, that we treasure. Yeah. You know, just a comment on that. My wife and I talk about that all the time, having moved here from an area where it was like Christians all over the place or even people in our church all over the place and all of a sudden you know you're you're out to eat with various people from the neighborhood or from her work and, which is awesome I mean we want to be part of the community but you know you, you lose that that there's a, something about that bond of faith which is just unspoken and, you know it's just that you know that the you are grounded on the same level, which is a awesome comfort that maybe you appreciate someplace in Reno more than anywhere else. You know, when you see somebody, oh, they got a cross on their door. You know, they must be a Christian. That's mm -hmm. cool, and and that's that's a neat thing. Yeah, I think that's definitely. I mean, we just moved here. Well, and this is going to be airing, you know, two months ago, and to walk in and know that. I'm going to know these people forever, you know. This is a relationship that's going to last all the way into heaven and just jump right in and know, okay, I can talk to these people. I, I can share things with them. I can be vulnerable around them because 
I know they view me, according to all these passages, that they're trying to be patient. They're trying to be loving. They're, they're doing their best to serve their God by being my friend um, and being members in this congregation as we work in this community. So um, I think that's a great place to start, you know, if we all are working with the same guidelines and procedures here to praise our God in that way. All right. Anyway, next one is uh, the verses say to be. Oh, then I had a long list of all those things, right, that we're supposed to be that I just read to you. So be at peace, of the same mind, accepting, waiting, uh, gentle, patient, kind. And then not to be a whole lot of different things. So don't grumble. One I really thought with not don't challenge or envy anyone. Uh, uh, don't complain against anyone. Doesn't this set up uh, to get taken advantage of by the world? If this is just how we're acting, if we're always the nice guy, I mean, nice guys finish last, right? Isn't that what they say? So if we are always good Christian people, doesn't that put us at a disadvantage? I think it puts us in a, as an advantage, um, especially when we're dealing with our fellow Christians. We don't have to worry about, uh, is that person going to take advantage of me? Um, boy, that other person at church. Um, we're, we're competing for a, a better spot higher up in, in the church. No, no, we're all working together. And as we are, as we are showing that kind of, of love and humility and unity toward one another, we're working together, and so we don't have to be afraid of that. I was kind of laughing to myself when you were talking about being taken advantage of. Is we all, you know, I think of it like when you you raise kids and you you train them. Okay, be kind, be nice to one another. Except then they get out on the sporting, you know, the athletic, go get them, come on, take them down. You know, we just get, it's like, be aggressive. <laughs> but, but then, oh, now you got to be kind. Yeah. And, and so it's just, a, it's interesting to see the, the areas of life where sometimes we say, okay, this only applies in this situation when we're be kind, be nice, be tolerant, be patient, and all these types of things. Um, so that's what I was kind of laughing at when you said that, but... Uh, but as you were talking about working together, you know, even the fact that the three of us are here, I think that's worth mentioning is, uh, and I, I say that all the time when people move to the area or they visit one of our churches and say, hey, uh, oh yeah, sorry pastor, we're going to Shepherd of the Lones this week. Who cares? <laughs> we're on the same team. <laughs> you know, I mean, thanks for telling me and, and, and we each have kind of our own geographical uh, areas, but it's not like we're in competition, and, and I think that's always good for our people to hear, too. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, that's, that's what I, I appreciate what you said. Yeah, your sports analogy is great, especially waiting for one another. Think of that as, you know, on a track shirt. You know, make sure you wait for one another. It's like, well, maybe. <laughs> right. We've all agreed to these rules, so you can go for it. Um, we want to be... A unified church. What is the problem when we fail to explain what unites us? So, I mean, what? Why are we here together? Why? Why don't we care? You know that someone else goes to that church, or someone else is talking to that pastor. Or, I mean, what really unites us? Maybe that's a nice little the, softball, yeah, the softball for you. Jesus. <laughs> Next question. Uh, okay. <laughs> I mean, it kind of plays into the body of Christ, right? Is that when, when Jesus uses all those illustrations, or Paul uses all those illustrations, that some are the, the various parts of the body, and yet you're still one body. And I think that applies to us as congregations, or even the Christian church at large, that... Um, it's, it's Christ that unifies us and the message of Christ crucified that. And, and so as long as that's there, not to minimize, I mean, there's, there's some wisdom in doing things so you don't always raise questions in people, but, 
to appreciate and and that's a hard thing to appreciate the diversity or you know we always say unity but not uniformity uh, because whether it's our congregations doing something different or the way that we do things in Reno is going to be different than the way they do things in California or Arizona or Africa or you know a Friday I was in a meeting with people from Africa, China, India um, you know we dare not say oh yeah you have to do it this way but we're all united in, the, in Christ and uh, Unfortunately, we, I think we assume, oh yeah, we're all united in Christ, so we, we don't even spend time cherishing that when we just look at all the peripheral things that maybe are different, and then we, we, we fail to hang on to the joy of the miracle that we can all say, I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. Um, I don't know, I don't want to cut you off. No, great stuff. Um, you, you kind of talk about, well, Jesus uniting us being a softball. We cannot emphasize that too much because even in churches, it's very easy for us to get into the mindset that we are here to make this organization more successful, right? That's, I mean, that's what a business does, right? They, they live to grow the business and to be more successful. Well, what does success look like at a church? It, it must look like growing larger and having more members and having bigger offerings. And that the work toward that stuff is not what unites us. It's, it's Christ that unites us. It's our faith in Him and what He's done for us and our, our work to, to promote that and to share that with more people so that more people can enjoy those blessings. That's the unity that we share. Not, not any of these other things. Yeah, we do have business type meetings. We have church council meetings or, or congregational meetings. And, and we do weigh the wisdom of one course of action or another. There are very important decisions to be made on an organizational level. But that's not what unites us. It's, it's Jesus and it's our, it's our love of him and our work together to promote his gospel. But he's the one at work through us to do that. So... How do you think we can? Sorry, you're the leader. I should no, ask no, this go question, for it. But, um, <laughs> because it's sometimes the other areas where the emotion gets in, right? Where, well, I think we should have blue carpeting, or I think we should have red carpeting. How do we downplay those things as a congregation? Or how can, if you're watching this, you know, how can how can we encourage patience among all of us to to let the main thing be the main thing? Take out all the carpeting. <laughs> I think this is a good place for our first break that we can take a little. We're going to put up another screen. Um, we will be commenting live on this. So if you're watching one of our live broadcasts, um, at least one of your pastors will be there commenting. So submit your answer to that question. How do we downplay um, the personal preferences, I guess, in what we want to see out of the church and elevate the true unifying factor of Christ. So um, we'll be back in just a minute. You'll see some kind of cool graphic coming up now.
summarize that point, I'm not sure what the discussions were, but explaining what unites us, I think we have a great example of that with just the fact that the springs exist and light of the valley exists. Not even that all of us are okay with our members going there, but just members of Shepherd going. We don't need to have a thousand members here, you know. There's an area there where other people can serve and they would benefit by some of our financial gifts going to that area because that will help Jesus be talked about more and have that unity. And, and you know, the North Valleys, that will help. Um, just seeing that no matter where people are, that there is unity if it's around Christ. Uh, and that's, that's what unifies us, you know, as the three churches here, larger church, and you know, eventually all, all believers who will be in heaven one day is um, wanting to be united around Christ, not just, just the locality, mm -hmm. which is important. Obviously, we all miss gathering together. Love to be back. But any other remark on that or something to go on to the next one? Maybe just to, just because it fit in with uh, last Sunday when I when we preached, or I preached on Matthew 16, which I think you did too, mm -hmm. with uh, Peter's confession, "You are the Christ," you know, and and uh, Jesus says, "Hey, this isn't something you knew from your dad. This is a miracle, right? This is something that your heavenly Father revealed to us." And and you kind of mentioned that before that we shouldn't take that for granted that this is. This is pretty amazing that the Holy Spirit has created that unity. Is a, and that's why we're celebrating. That's why we're talking about it today, right? Mm -hmm. That um, to just marvel at the, not just that, oh, I found like-minded people, but that God worked in us like-minded people is fantastic and mm -hmm. just adds to the joy of being stronger together. I think that's a great segue to the next one, the idea of synergy and being greater than the sum of our parts is talked about all the time in the corporate world. The acronym, Together Everyone Achieves More, TEAM, um, is up there all over the place. Why is unity so much more important to the body of Christ than it is to even being a successful business or corporation? Well, corporations, they work hard to, to try to unite their people around a goal. You have mission statements and vision statements are a big part of, of what goes on in the business world. And they definitely have their place there. Uh, we in the church, we might use some of those tools as well to try to make sure that we stay uh, keeping the same goals in mind and working together. But, but we're already united, right? We're already a team from the start. It's not like we go out and hire people and then try to make them a part of a team, but God has already brought us together into this team of Christians, of, of being in his church. And so there, it's not possible for me to be a Christian who is on my own. Uh, nobody becomes a Christian by himself, right? Uh, somebody had to baptize that Christian. Somebody had to proclaim the gospel to that Christian. There needs to be somebody who, who administers the sacrament to that Christian. It can't just be, I'm, I'm on my own on an island. Uh, whereas in the corporate world, I suppose it would be possible for you to run your own business and, and to do all the work yourself. You might be limited to how much you can grow, but you could do it if you worked hard enough. In the church, it's just not possible. Uh, we, we must be united to each other in order to be the church. Yeah, great points. Anything to add? Uh, no, no, that was... Nailed it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, it was, it was good. It was good. Wow. All right. Um, how... The question I have is, how do you personally strive as a pastor to lead a church full of unique personalities? And... This will be another place um, I want to take some time to just talk about personal vocations. Because 
we're, we're called to be pastors. You know, we, I have a letter in my office that this group of believers has asked me to come here and teach them the word and administer the sacraments and reach out to the community and go and help the sick and needy. And, um, I have a specific thing that I'm asked to do. It's clearly defined, but, you know, being a father or a mother or a child or an employee or a boss, you know, all of these different callings that we have in our life, there's not always such a detailed list of things. This is what I want you to do. Um, so knowing that unity is important in all the relationships that you have between in a Christian marriage with children, um, I guess I'll ask um, for suggestions from those who are watching right now of ways that you strive to be united with the people around you. Um, we'll talk about that for a couple of minutes and then we'll come back with our reactions to how we do it as pastors and also in our other vocations that God has asked us to do. strive uh, to lead a church full of unique personalities and then if you want to comment on your other vocations as well go for it you me first well I, I could go say ahead. that this is one of my favorite things about being a pastor is uh, working together with people who have all these different talents and abilities all these different personalities and and goals if go back to the analogy I guess with the business if you were if you were running your business you could go out and you could hire people who are exactly what you want right you could 
You can pick people out who have just the right personality to do the work that you want them to do. It's not the way it is in the church. We don't get to choose who our fellow Christians are and what their talents and abilities will be. Instead, uh, we take who God gives us, right? We work together with the people that God places us together with. And, and it's fascinating to see how God brings people from different places together and, and he puts people together in exactly the right combination that he has in mind to get his work done, even though that's not the combination we would choose if we were in charge of it, right? We, there, there are people in our congregations that we would never choose to, to be Christians, but God has placed them there, and they're exactly the right person to be in that place to work together with us. And so even though we don't, we don't realize it ahead of time just how important those gifts and abilities are that they have to us, God knows, and he, he makes it work out to be just perfect so that he reaches the people that he has in mind for us to bring the gospel to. So you would not choose everybody in your congregation? No, no, just kidding. <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> I'm, saying, I'm saying that I am not wise enough oh, to choose oh, all the people okay. that God has wisely oh, yes. put me together That's with. Good. Give you an option to clarify that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, those are those are good points. Um, you know, I, I think some practical things of how do you how do you emphasize the unity, not just in like like the service opportunities is one thing. Trying to plug people into how has God gifted them, and how does that match with what they're what they're bringing and what they're doing and serving in joy, and yet to always have something that unites to elevate the unity I, I think it has to go to worship um, corporate worship if you want to call it that way or worship is still the the one activity at least in my view the one activity of the church that unites people that are zero to a hundred right and people from all walks of life and that's that's what's so neat about the worship opportunity um, or even one of the, the things that we strive for, you know, one of the principles of Christian worship is let the people participate. So you have everybody, whether it's singing a hymn or requesting a prayer or bringing an offering, um, those are all demonstrations of, of that unity around worshiping God. Uh, so, so as far as elevating one area of, of, of unity, I would say gathering together for worship is, at least in my mind, the, the most important for activity of the church, not to downplay the other things, but I can't really think of other activities that incorporate all the gifts of God's people. No, I, I mean, the Bible uses the body of Christ analogy, you know, and I'm not saying the Bible is lacking anything, but something I always have to explain to people is sometimes you change what part you are. You know, there's there's a time when, um, you know, maybe you're in your 30s and you're you're going out there and you're knocking on doors and you have all this energy, and then all of a sudden you move out of that into something else. Um, but there are some people, you know, that really have a hard time when they can't serve in the same way they used to serve, you know, they, they can't uh, play the piano as well as they used to do and lead worship, they can't do all the maintenance uh, on, the, on the church and I would say, well, Pastor, you know, I wish I could, wish I could do more. It's like, you're here, like, you saying hello to people, having friends, calling them up, saying a prayer, um, you are, you're a different part of the body than you were before but you are just as important, and we need you here. And that's, that's true for every single person that's at the church. There's a reason we need him here. There's a reason that person makes us better. Um, and I'm happy people are different, because that's, that's what we need. That's how God made them. So to always view them in that way is, okay, let's talk about plugging them in to some extent, but how, how do we get that person to worship their God? better in this location, being united by Jesus. I know I slapped like nine points together there no. at the end, but yeah. 
know, serving and being served, right? Those are both legitimate vocations in the church. Um, we, we all want to be the ones serving others, right? And, and you brought up the example of somebody who can't serve in the way that they once did. But there are other people who need to serve in those, in those instances. And so they need somebody to serve, right? And so serving and being served are both important. In fact, there really is no higher vocation than being served because that's what every Christian is. We are being served by our Savior who serves us, the Son of Man who came not to be served but to serve, right? He serves us, and so we all need the service of our Savior. And then when we turn around and serve one another, that's good. That's, that's the right response to it. But also, as we are served by each other, and we give thanks to our Savior for the service that our fellow Christians provide to us, that's a good and important role in the church as well. And to even make it a joy for them to serve, mm -hmm. right? I, I think of my, my first church there, the a lady who's now in heaven, but she was like the top cancer nurse oncology nurse in the in the whole city and she worked for the best doctor oncology doctor and and then she got cancer and it was just so frustrating for her because like she was she was miss volunteer at at church and she was you know serving all these patients and she was very and all of a sudden she's like to, to go that flip the roles to be served and to try to say you can still serve by making that nurse's job easier or you can still serve by making this member of the church who's coming to visit you make it a joy for them to come and visit you instead of just saying you know if you're just grumping at them the whole time I mean not that you can't I'm not saying we can't let our feelings show like oh yeah this chemo is really horrible but but you know when she learned that she could serve in that way to that it got other people excited to serve and she was equipping them to serve, uh, uh, that's what, what you said, the importance of being here is, I, I hope everybody who's watching this just realizes that how important it is for them, for each other to be here. And, uh, and not just for, for the fellow people sitting in the, in the pews or the chairs, but I think, I feel that, you know, that's like, and we've talked about that before too, it's like, it's, stunk to have to preach to a camera for two months and uh, not just because you have to edit it for four or five hours but it's uh but you know I think I feed off of of that person who's paying attention in the pew and you're you're connecting with them with God's word and you and and so even even now with a I mean it's it's nice to have people back but it's it's still a little fragmented with the uh, the multiple services and that type of thing and it's just I, I realize just how much not that the people that are watching need each other but how much I need them as well yeah it's like the David verse I rejoice with those who said to me let us go to the house of the Lord you know it's not I rejoiced when I heard someone say I'm going to the house of the Lord you know right it's not hey good for you it's no we get to worship the same God together, and we have unity in that, and that makes me happy. It makes me happy that someone else knows the same thing I know. Someone else is loved by their God. Someone else doesn't have to carry the guilt of their sins. And um, Jesus' work, you know, is changing more lives than just mine. It's it's for the whole world, and right. um, yeah, great stuff. What about other vocations? You you mentioned other vocations. Oh, I was I was talking, you know, thinking of, um, you know, being a being a husband and a, a father. Um, are the really, I mean, I, I'm a father first, you know, and, or husband <laughs> first, father, yeah, and then you know, but then, but this is my call. But you know, I I do this with the help of my family. Who, who loves me and supports me and um, cares for me. So to have us united, you know, um, I mean, we're going to talk about love and humility coming forward, but just to, to strive to help them see their Savior through me, 
you know, and just with my wife, you know. She knows she can be vulnerable with me and I'm not gonna be upset, you know. Everyone makes mistakes, or my children, you know, know that these are the rules, we're gonna be firm, however, um, at the end of the day, there's still love. It's not, it's not the same, well it is, it's the same unity. I'm reflecting Christ's love and they get to see Christ through me. And because they know that, they know that I'm working as hard as I can to show the love of Christ in all of my relationships. And Christ doesn't let me down and I'm praying every day not to let them down, knowing that I'm just a man. So, um, anything else to add to that? I don't think that's a good segue, but... Yeah, well, <laughs> the only thing I would maybe have to... I don't know, what's, was it The Meaning of Marriage? Tim Keller's book on marriage? But I, you know, and I, I forget that often, is that what's the number one goal of your... as a spouse is to... not to make their life perfect or everything like that, or, but we want to... we're the tool that God has put closest to this person to keep them in a relationship with Christ, right? Mm -hmm. um, and that we see our husbands or our wives or our kids or our relatives of anybody that God has put close to you, whatever your relationship is, somehow God united you with that person for what purpose? Um, ultimately, it's so that they've been close to Him. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, yeah, that's something I know I need to be reminded of all the time. That it's not just, oh, we're, we're running this household together. Mm -hmm. Or we're running this team together, you know, or whatever. But that we're, we're there to build each other up um, in their relationship with Jesus. Yeah, I mean, the family is kind of like a mini church, you know? It's, you, you have... People all serving their God together and um, working together. And like any church, every family is going to have problems, you know, that you're going to have to work through. And um, I'm going to launch into the next two. So I should probably just use it as kind of a, a segue or a transition to next week. Um, but um, I'll still be on commenting. I will leave the, the video going for. About 10 or 15 minutes afterwards so that we can follow up and answer questions uh, to anyone who has it right now but next week we're talking about gonna be humility or love which one's next love is love, love is love next. is next okay um, so we're talking about love and hope you enjoyed this um, I think before we leave we should close with prayer Lord, our Heavenly Father, we thank you uh, for the many gifts that you have given to your church. We thank you for the unity that we share. Um, not just unity of the places that we worship or, or unity of uh, a name, but the unity that we all believe in Jesus Christ as our one and only Savior. Lord, help us to... Um, Help us to downplay our personal selfish preferences and always strive to be unified in heart and in mind around the true teachings of your holy word. In your name we pray. Amen. Thanks a lot for joining us this week and we'll see you next week, Wednesday at 7 p.m. Bye-bye.